Hey guys, I thought I'd do a quick video on programmatic or coding frameworks. So let me give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about so you understand at least the basic concepts, context. Uh, number one, you got Vue.js, React.js, Angular. These are JavaScript frameworks. On the server side, the server coding, you have frameworks like Laravel for PHP, Python, oops, Django for Python, Flask for Python. You have um, Express.js for JavaScript on the server. You have uh, Spring for Java. So what exactly are frameworks and why should you care and why should you use them? In a nutshell, a framework is just a bunch of code in a package. The package is called a framework. And this framework basically provides the basis the basic code structure, if you will, that you can use to build your apps. Most of the popular frameworks, if not all of them, are free to use. And uh, what it is, is that over the, over the years, programmers have figured out that there's a bunch of things that we need to do in our apps that are pretty common. So why should this programming team here rewrite an authentication layer, and this programming group over here rewrite another authentication layer, Etc. 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 So, starting in the 90s, at least from my experience, they started building frameworks, and you have all kinds of competing frameworks out there because different programmers, different nerds, have different points of view about how to build a particular framework and how to build a certain type of library. Fortunately for everybody concerned, when it comes to the web stack, especially uh, these frameworks are pretty uh, solid and they're pretty consistent. Whether you work with Python, Django or uh, Express.js, or PHP Laravel, uh, Ruby Rails, whatever. Whichever framework you use these days, all the modern ones, they're very similar in many respects. They all share a lot of the same properties. They're not 100% identical. But the point is, let's say you decided, uh, you started learning Python Django, the Django framework, and then you got a job where you had to, I don't know, work with Express.js and Node. For you to transition from Python Django to Express JS JavaScript would be very easy because um, the frameworks in principle are very similar. So it wouldn't be a huge leap. It's like learning to drive an Audi and then moving over to a Porsche. Yes, there are differences. Buttons are in different places. The cars behave a little bit differently, but largely it's pretty much the same. You're, you're driving a high powered sports car. It's a high powered sports car. So back to frameworks. So um, the nerds figured out over the years there were certain things that we wanted to do in a particular way. So, for example, with regards to authentication, logging people into sites, we pretty much figured out how to do that properly. So, uh, all the major frameworks will have authentication modules in their big uh, framework that they provide for you. So, all the framework is is just a bunch of code, right? So, in the case of, say, PHP pages, a bunch of PHP pages with all kinds of code in there, structured in a very particular way. So the framework is not just a bunch of code, but it's it's a bunch of code organized in a way that's understood, that's correct, so that when you build your app, you build it upon this framework that they provide for you, this logical structure for your code. And the reason I mention that is that is one of the advantages of the framework, that it is understood, logical, consistent, and it uh, adheres to certain basic best practices of coding and the major advantage of that is that you get cleaner code to begin with when well let me just give you the big advantages so advantage number one with using a framework is that uh, it saves you a lot of time so again instead of having instead of having to figure out how to structure a web app in the case of the web the framework provides that structure for you logical structure where you place uh, these type of files, and those type of files, et cetera, et cetera. I'm trying to avoid jargon so that I can speak to a wide audience here. Um, just like you come to a kitchen, right? You know that the, the, the stove is always uh, lower than the microwave, or the dishwasher is not on top of the counter, it's always under the counter. You know, the, 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 the hot and cold, you know, which side they're on, depending on what country you're in, eh, that kind of, I don't know. I don't know if it's a great analogy, but I hope you're getting the idea. The whole point of the one of the main advantages of having a framework, using a framework, is that it provides a re ready-made structure that you can just start writing your real app. 
you just start writing your app for. It also provides a bunch of uh, modules that are pre-built for you, like authentication modules. So you don't have to come up with a way of creating a proper authentication for your web app or your website. It's there already. You just put it, you just use it. Uh, you may have database access layers. That's very common, by the way. Uh, so again, instead of you having trying to figure out how to access the database in a smart way that's logical, it's all been figured out for you already. And it can go on and on and on and on and on and on. So you have these frameworks that just makes it really easy for you to get a site up really, really quickly. Another advantage of a framework is that you're going to have less buggy code. The less code that you write, the less bugs you can have. Now, the thing about a framework, let's look at Vue.js, for example. It's been worked on for years now. It's pretty mature, like React, like Angular. And yes, every code base has bugs, but because there's been so many people contributing to Vue and React and Angular in these examples, uh, you know that they're pretty solid. You know that the code is pretty clean and solid. You know it's been tested and, and fixed and refixed. You don't have to do all that work. I don't know what, what the man hours are, but let's say to perfect an authentication uh, module, for example, maybe on your own, that might take you 30 hours to do, 40 hours to do if you're experienced, maybe 10 hours, who knows, depending on the features. But now with modern frameworks, you have authentication modules built in. So you just have to use it. You don't have to spend the 10, 20, 30 hours trying to come up and write all that code. One of the basic rules I teach people when it comes to coding and development in general, do not look for ways to write code. Don't try to find code to write. One of the instincts of a beginner, and I've been there, is that you figure, oh, I should write everything on my own. I should start, you know, it's cheating to use somebody else's code. No, it's not. It's smart to use everybody else's code. And by the way, if you're using Windows or Mac OS or Linux, you're using MySQL, Postgre, you're using Mongo, you're using Apache Web Server, Nginx or IS, using other people's code. So you just, you know, trust me, in your active work as a developer, you will have lots of opportunity to write code. So don't go looking for ways uh, to write code, meaning don't reinvent the wheel. Use what's already been w developed and refined over time. Don't try to reinvent the wheel, in most cases anyway. The final advantage that I'll cite for using a framework, and there are others, but the final big one for me is that when you use a standardized framework, we'll say Vue.js as an example. You build up your site, you build up your app, your web app with Vue, and let's say you're successful and you're starting to get people on it and you want to expand and you can't do all the work with yourself, so you hire other developers. Now, if you had rolled out your own JavaScript framework from scratch instead of using something established like Vue, using Vue you're going to have a much easier time to have people, new engineers, new coders who come into your project. It's going to be far easier for them to get up to speed with the way in which your app is laid out. If, on the other hand, you're using um, some custom framework of your own, then somebody comes in new, they're going to have to learn that. So that might be two weeks of learning before they actually start writing productive code for you. But if you use an established framework, you can hire somebody who knows that framework. They come in, they hit the ground running. It just makes sense in that way. So when you're thinking about your code base as a business, you have to think about using standardized uh, frameworks and libraries so that you can bring in talent quickly and get them quickly up to speed. That's a huge part of writing good software is having software that's easy for people to uh, jump into and start working on. So there you go. Those are the top three reasons why you should look at frameworks. Number one, they save you a lot of time because they have all this common stuff built for you. Number two, you're going to have a more solid, less buggy code base since you're going to be using uh, refined, vetted, proofed, if you will, code bases found in these frameworks. And three, when you want to bring in new people, it will be much easier for them to get up to speed with your software if you've used frameworks that are commonly used in the marketplace. I hope that is useful to you. So if you are a beginner, let's say you've done my HTML, my CSS course, maybe you've done my JavaScript course, you have now the fundamental skills to start exploring different frameworks for the client side. You have a few, you have many options. The number one option I would recommend 
for academic purposes is Vue.js. Easiest to get up to speed with, very powerful. It's growing in popularity quickly. It's not as popular as React, that's for sure, uh, but it's growing fast. And especially if you're freelancing, you're doing small projects, it's a good one. And besides, if you learn Vue, and then you find you have a job open in React, for you to go from Vue to React would be like, like this. Again, like learning to drive internality, moving to a Porsche, no big deal. That is what I would do. So uh, final point, this came up in a recent conversation. To use a framework in your code, there's different ways to bring it in. Now with client-side libraries, JavaScript libraries like Vue and React, you can just include them. You just have to, it's just like including this external CSS file. You just put a you know, bit of JavaScript at the top of your page and boom, you got access to Vue. That's one way. There's other ways as well. For server-side frameworks like Laravel, uh, Ruby Rails, uh, um, uh, Django, for example, you could download them, but these days what people do is they use um, package managers where you go to the server via command line and you can use, issue some commands and boom, uh, download what you need. Again, it depends on the framework, depends on the ser server setup, etc. But just remember, all these frameworks, they're just code they're just code so if it's a java script based framework if it, if it is a javascript based framework this is js files if it's a php framework it's, it's mostly php files if it's a java based framework it's going to be uh class files right uh etc 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 i hope you get the idea all right that's it for today bye, -bye.